Besides that, man. So we're doing well. We can see out of both eyes now, both you eyes. think? We, okay. we went to, he had an ulcer on his eye okay. last week. And we went to Dr. Bust up in uh, yep. Florida, and he told us he can see that in both eyes. <coughs> okay. The same as Dr. Carastro when she, when she rechecked him. So he's. So everybody that we've spoken to, this has been a crazy week. He's had a pancreatitis, those liver and yeah, so Everybody like... sends their, their regards to Dr. Wong. Okay. Every time I saw <laughs> Okay. Let's see the rest of it. Free to go. You were gonna Come steal on. a kiss. I saw that. You were gonna steal a kiss. So the most important thing is he has his vision back. Um, the challenge is we don't know what the cause of the vision loss is. Is it um, is it inflammation like optic neuritis? Was it inflammation of the brain, meaning encephalitis, but there are other things like tumors and infections that can cause the exact same symptoms. Um, so we still have two main directions we can go. Direction number one is doing an MRI. Um, I realize it's a little bit harder to you know, wrap your head around doing an MRI when your dog's getting better and I can, no, I, understand. I can completely recognize that. Um, the challenge becomes um, you know, what happens in, in the future. So, um, so option one is we do an M MRI. The rationale for that is to find out what the underlying right. cause is so that we can tailor our treatment from here. So exactly. the second option is that we say, well, gosh, he's improved. We can comfortably say that this is prednisone responsive in that he was blind and two days after, three days after being on prednisone, um, you know, he got better and we continue to slowly, or in his case, even more rapidly decrease the prednisone. The dilemma and the thing that we balance, not just for him, but for any dog, is as we decrease the prednisone, signs will come back. Um, if it's something like you know, a tumor, it's certainly going to come back. If it's something like inflammation, it will probably come back. Um, with inflammation, usually we try and decrease it really slowly, but he's told us, hey, I disagree with prednisone, we have to decrease it a little faster. So, you know, since he looks pretty good right now, I would be hesitant to decrease it faster than we've already done. You know, I would probably want to stay on the one tablet once a day for at least you know, another week. Even with the, the liver enzymes, the way they were? So, uh, I, I guess I worry more about the pancreas. I mean, mo most prednisone um, things that we see with liver enzymes, it's just the alkvoss and um, the pancreatitis, the inflammation of the pancreas, you know, the pancreas kind of sits right, right next the to it. The the yep. so, so we often see those together. Um, we'll, we will tentatively plan for you know, um, two more weeks of the once a day. And so for a total of one month, you've already done two weeks of once a day, we'll do two more weeks of once a day. And then we'll go down to a half of a pill or five milligrams once a day for probably a month. Thank you so much. Thank you All right, we'll see you in a month, okay? Thank you. All yes. right, I'll see you. You better see me. <laughs> Get it? You better. You guys are making me nervous. No, I'm not even thinking about you. I'm thinking about what to eat. That's good. Between here and... You have to pick up the kiddos. Yeah. I played tennis on Monday and Tuesday and I'm playing on Thursday and I do not have the courage to do anything other than go directly home <laughs> and husband and father it up and yeah. tell her to go get, like, get a pedicure or something. Seems reasonable. We have to think about his degenerative myelopathy. There's a test for, it's, it's a genetic condition, so there's a test to see does he have the genes associated with it. By itself, that test is not enough to give us the answer. We need to combine it with symptoms. We need to combine it with the normal MRI. But if that comes back as positive, or what we call, what we'll call affected at risk, if he comes back with two bad copies of the gene, that will be something 
Um, that will be what we are most suspicious that he has, degenerative myelopathy. That is typically something that is progressive. It's not painful, um, so he doesn't suffer necessarily, but it's something that um, it does progress and there's really nothing that we can do to slow or stop the progression. Um, so we want that test to come back negative. Um, that'll take about a week or so for us to get those results. But you already did the test? We are, while he was out, we did a swab. swab. Yep. Um, so you can do a swab. The swab's actually less expensive, and that's mm -hmm. something that you can order, mm -hmm. and then they send it to you, you swab it, then you send it off. Um, that's less expensive. They prefer blood, um, and it's just more expensive because we need to you know, send it out on ice overnight, FedEx shipping type thing. So it ends up being more expensive to you, um, but if you'd like, we can send it off. If you whatever, if you already pulled the blood, yeah. I mean, it's it's it's, it's, it's better, um, you know, per the lab, they, they prefer the blood work. So he seems to be getting a little bit better because okay. today he went to get his toy, and I haven't really been letting him jump. And today he he jumped and had strength in both back okay. legs to get himself up. So I don't know if that's a good sign. He's he's, he's it, it's, it's good. It's you know, if you tell me tomorrow he's better, the next day he's better, the next day he's better, you know, I'll, I'll put more, um, you know, credibility there. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's just, it's too early to say. Yeah, well, know, I mean, I haven't, he hasn't been able to do that in, in like a month. Okay. We're at the old vet, or at our vet, he always jumps on the counter because he gets a, a treat. Right. And the last couple weeks he's done that and he's sort of like been weak in the back. So he gets down on his own, but today he literally stood on my truck and stayed up. Okay. So I mean that was a real big improvement for for as far as where he's been. You know, he's definitely showing. I guess I don't know if he's compensating and he's getting the strength yeah. back. But, uh, uh, again, I I hope that I'm wrong. Um, you know, and that it, this test comes back negative. Just when we do an MRI and we don't see an obvious slip disc or an obvious tumor or an obvious spinal cord stroke, to explain the symptoms um, when we have an adult to older shepherd we start worrying about the gender myelopathy granted his history does not fit with that um, and then it seems like it's only been going on for a little over a month um, do I mean I think he can go on walks I think he can be on a leash I don't think he needs to be in a crate 24 hours a day or 23 hours out of the day um, we, we don't see any evidence that that's what's going on so I wouldn't let him you know go back to work you know yet I wouldn't let him run like crazy um, but I I don't think he needs to be in a cage or in a kennel you know all day long all right all right so um, when do I hear back from you for that probably result? in about a week or so it, we're kind of at the mercy of when they run the test but it, it usually takes about seven seven days or so so hopefully early next week okay. um. He's crate resting. Um, he says that she's pretty comfortable, but she's now off balance on all four, which she wasn't before. <coughs> How are you? How are you? Doing well. Thank you for your patience. We were, um, I was looking at the MRI and the x-rays, um, and it just took us a little bit to get them pulled up onto, um, in, into the, the computer. There were three different disks, so we got that. So. 100% certain that there's no evidence of AA instability on the x-rays, and, and I don't even see it on the MRI. Okay. Um, so I'm comfortable in crossing that off our, our worry list. But if you remember, the other things that we worry about that can cause neck pain in a five-year-old poodle are things like a slipped disc, mm -hmm. things like meningitis, things like tumor, things like infection. Um, so I don't see any obvious evidence of bone infection or bone uh, tumor on the x-rays. Um, the MRI that they did looked at the brain and the neck. Um, and it's useful, so I don't want, um, I don't want my answer to suggest that you know, it, it's not a good MRI. Um, there are just different types of MRIs that kind of like um, like HDTV yeah. has really yeah. high resolution and there are so many things that you can see 
versus you know if I remember like basic, kind of ba basic cable where you're adjust, adjusting the, the yeah, antenna yeah, outside right. you know there's just so much more you can see so our interpretation of the MRI is limited one by by that uh, just the difference in equipment um, there are things that I can see on the MRI that I'm comfortable in saying you know it's not this or it's not that I don't see um, obvious hydrocephalus for what it's worth hydrocephalus usually would not cause these sorts of symptoms anyway so that was not high on our worry list um, but from the MRI I do not think that there is hydrocephalus um, hydrocephalus meaning fluid buildup inside of the brain um, the other thing that's making the MRI hard to interpret is that she has a microchip um, and that happens even on that happens on all MRI scanners. If there's metal there, it kind of warps the picture. It warps it a little bit more on um, on, on some of the lower powered MRIs just because they take longer to make the picture. Um, so there there's a, a large kind of warp in the in the yeah, MRI. Yeah, they showed me that. You, you yeah. saw it, okay. So um, what I am comfortable saying. From, from the MRI. So um, what we're looking at here, this is this is her, her in profile. So her head, her neck, and this down here is um, uh, an artifact from the microchip. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of making it look warped, which whoops, which and makes it harder for us to, <coughs> to see the spinal cord. Um, it just becomes hard to see things like meningitis um, or myelitis inflammation usually comes up as bright spots and just because it's somewhat warped and um, just not as quite of a crisp clear picture it's hard for me to say is there evidence of inflammation or not um, this disc there does appear at least on this side view to be a bit of a bulge there that certainly could cause things like neck pain um, but when we look at it in the cross section here, um, so this picture being a slice mm -hmm. through there, I mean, you, you can see just how warped the picture becomes because, um, of, the because of the microchip, right. making it really hard for me to say that much uh, uh, about it. Um, <clears throat> so I, I do not think that that is significant hydrocephalus. I mean, for a small breed dog, that to me is a very, very normal amount of fluid in the brain. Uh, overall, I think she looks pretty good right now. I, I don't think we, um, I don't think she's in an emergent category where she looks really, really, you know, sick and we need to do something right now. So um, we've got kind of two directions we can go. Direction number one is to take the information that we have right now and say, um, well, it doesn't look to be an obvious tumor, doesn't look to be hydrocephalus, doesn't look to be AA instability. Still could be slipped disc versus meningitis, um, but we'll slowly decrease the prednisone, continue to rest her as if she has a slipped disc, and if she gets better and stays better, we'll assume it was a slipped disc and we've avoided um, and we've avoided surgery and things like that. Mm -hmm. If, as we slowly decrease the prednisone, symptoms come back and she starts getting worse, at that point, as, as much as it stinks, I'm going to recommend an MRI for us to better determine is it meningitis or a slipped disc. So that is option one. Is in, that, in that scenario, we have to remove the microchip? I don't think we're going to have to do that. Um, I don't think we're going to have to do that. So, that's option one. Option two is that we move towards an MRI. Now, um, the main downsides of doing an MRI are, well, if we find a slipped disc and she looks this good, I might not recommend surgery anyway. So we would certainly have more information by doing an MRI now, but because she looks good and because we've kind of ruled out some of the worrisome stuff, all except for meningitis, I'm okay with not doing an MRI right now. I just want you to understand if things aren't getting better, I'm going to recommend repeating tests. Perfect. Okay. Alrighty. Doctor, one more thing. You got it. I'll <laughs> talk so to you much. soon, okay? Are you here? No. Carly. Oh, they're dropping off today, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Charlie McDee.
Ye they got blood work at Dr. Foley. I don't Please. think I've seen it. I think I slid it over to you. Yeah, I saw it. I looked at it. Mild elevations in the liver values, but he's been on red. I didn't see one chest rods yet, but I believe we did them before his previous seminar. I thought we told them to <laughs> do them. We did. Okay. So I put a to-do to call and see if they Just did sure. chest rods again, but I'll okay. follow up with them. Okay. Um, otherwise, <clears throat> whatever his Big dog. Yeah, I remember yeah. 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 like an Australian. Remember how you threw the unit? So we'll have a 12, 13, 13, 1. Left side. Left side. Apparently he was not decreased. Right. He was at his RDD for two weeks before he saw him. So it's all started in late July. And that's not because it's special. Sounds cool, so. Very decreased. Awesome. Um, all the way. Significantly. Significantly. The rotons, the. Oh, Kerosene's might be nice. The cat spatulas. But since he was getting better. Twelve blade. Um, okay. Micro. Oh, I'm gonna call Pam. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Hope you found something of value. Uh, if you did, feel free to give us a comment, give us a like, share it with someone that you think might get something out of it.